peeling back every ingredient of staying planted in sometimes uncomfortable seasons or staying planted in, because I think, yeah, it's like, you know, the deeper your roots grow, even if there's storms all around you, or even if there's stuff, you know, I was learning empathy, the pastoral heart. I was becoming a better leader. I was learning teamwork. I was learning culture. I was learning a lot. And then eventually when I said that to him and with Benny Perez, sports analogies are kind of like prophecies. He was like, I I feel that one, you know, Michael Jordan playing baseball and my basketball was even entrepreneurship. Like I really had that call to, I think to business and that passion for business and then social media marketing video, YouTube. And he knew even when he hired me that I had a side YouTube thing going. So I'd been doing that stuff on the side, but I felt like that was the moment. And I remember when he was like, yeah, I feel that I think. And I told him, I said, you tell me what to do, full-time, part-time, or no time. So I was like, I trust you as my pastor and elders. And the reason I tread lightly is some people get into authoritarian, whatever, yeah, you know. good leaders. And like, and, and should you really, is it okay to leave certain situations? And so to each his own. But all I know is that, and, and by the way, there was some stuff where it was hard on our marriage because I had, just because I had this like David mindset doesn't mean that my wife and I were in agreement about everything, you know? And so I've learned a lot in that season, but my, my heart was in the place of I'm waiting until I'm sent, you know? And when they were like, bro, you're kind of released. Essentially, I was like, let's go. So now then I went to freelance for a year and then my freelance clients fired me at the end of 2015. And so I just went all in as a solo creator. I definitely had some business chops and leadership chops leading up to that point. And now Think Media basically has been 2016 to 2023 in the current state that it is. And some might say that it's pretty extraordinary, the growth we've had and some of the things we've accomplished. And I would say, yeah, it hasn't just been, you know, the last seven years. It was the 10 years before that of the roots growing deep. And in that developmental season, that, you know, wilderness season, I think that's, you know, that that dark room is where the picture is developed where your character is getting forged. And I've realized business, leadership, entrepreneurship, it's freaking tough, man. It's really, it's really hard. So you need that, that character, at least for me, it's been helpful for all that formation time. Yeah. The reference of David was really good. Yeah. I want to touch on something with that, that I think would be cool. Is it with David, obviously first we got Samuel who goes out and like anoints him. And really that was cool because he was like, not the likely guy. Yeah. Right? He's like, oh, this should be the guy. Oh no, God looks at the heart. He doesn't just look on the external like man does. And you could take so much confidence in that. But David also sat there and let Saul be king knowing, oh, when God wants me to be king, I'll be king. And no one can take that away. But if yes. I go into the season of kingship, I'm doing it without God. But how often do people play small? Like there has to be something that people are doing wrong where they just never step into that next season. Yeah. Somehow David was doing it so right. And you had this time where you got released. And so how do you even balance that now with the aggressiveness of building a business and getting on stages? And there's times where I'm like, you know, I've had people ask like, oh, is it just not my season yet? I'm like, I don't, I I really don't Mm. know. Right. Like, like David did it well, but when he became king, he was like, okay, now I'm released into this. It's time to aggressively grow. Yeah. What do you think for people out there? Like if they're in this season of feeling like I know I'm supposed to do that, but am I supposed to transition myself promoting? Yeah. Have you ever been through any of that? Sure. Sure. 100%. It's a very good conversation for Christian men who want to honor God. Yeah. Uh, I think, I think that the first question is you may know, you may know if you're honest with yourself, sometimes the heart is deceitful, but you know, if what you're in, where your ambition's at. But you may not know, but like, you know, secondly, you need voices in your life. I think you need, you need wise people you can process things with Yeah. who who can speak into your life to say like, you're not ready or, or, and then vice versa. You're being lazy. You're being fearful. Like you're, you're uh, tolerating abusive leadership. You're, you know, so there's your prayer time with the, with the Lord and and then are you willing to be honest with yourself? My motive is because uh, because ambition is good. Toxic ambition is bad. Yeah. Ambition is good. Selfish ambition is is bad. I would encourage everybody to immediately buy Three Kings by Gene Edwards, which is a phenomenal book about 
Saul, David, and Absalom. And there's three personas that we can fall into as men. Mm -hmm. You don't want to be Saul. You don't want to be Absalom. You want to be David. Saul was insecure. Saul wanted to be approved by people. He feared people. He didn't even care about the approval of God. He just said, hey, Samuel, will you at least honor me in front of people? He built a monument to himself. He was afraid of powerful leaders around him. Uh, he tried to kill David. And he was also incredibly talented, gifted, and started well. He was very victorious and yeah. as a king. He even prophesied and all this stuff. He really was changed by the Spirit. So you don't want to be Saul. You don't want to be Absalom. If your way of building your platform is by tearing someone else's down, if your way of building your platform is by lying or being somewhat deceptive, trying to win people to yourself, you got to be careful, man, because that was Absalom's style. And uh, he was not a man of honor. And he also built a monument to himself. David, Saul eventually, it says he eventually built an altar to the Lord. And that was like, one time it was mentioned. Meanwhile, David lived with perpetual altars being built to the Lord. He was a man of prayer. So even that, that back to number one, if you're not a, a man of, of prayer, fasting, worship as part of your lifestyle, if every once in a while yeah. you pray and seek God, like that's, that's the, oh, the only way, the way to crucify pride is prayer. 